Hi, I'm Josh with Tactical Tech, and today I'm just going to do a short tutorial on uh, AIM's basic training. Now, everything in this uh, basic front end is included in the master front end. It's just a more limited version of the master front end. So we're going to go ahead and start by opening up the front end. And uh, this getting started window pops up. Just go ahead and close it. And the first thing I want to introduce you to is the manifest under basic links. I already got this populated from the front end and uh, this is basically just a list of all the items within our inventory. Uh, the basic user is unable to update the box, descriptive ID, the serial number, the authorized quantity, or the need column on his own, or indirectly that is, but he is able to update the on-hand quantity, uh, the remarks section, or the location if we had locations, and indirectly the sub-hand receipt number as well. A couple of the controls up here, uh, we can filter this down by package, let's say if we want to see third platoon equipment only, we can filter it by third platoon. We can also search for stuff, let's say I'm looking for CLP, and uh, it'll pop up with all third platoons CLP. Let's say in the first squad we ended up using one, I can change on hand quantity, and it tells me over in this column that I need one box of CO or one container of CLP. In order to clear it up, just here the, hit this uh, X button, and we're back to third platoon, and uh, we can drop down this and go back to all and see all. If we want to see just property book items, just go ahead and click this button right here. And it brings up all your property book items, and you can also filter that down further by your search or your uh, uh, package. Now let's say that I want to go ahead and create a 1750 for third platoon's material or equipment. I filter it by third platoon and just click this uh, DD1750. It will pop up with who it was packed by, and I'll just put in my name. And you usually want to put in your rank and everything else, but just for confidentiality purposes, I'm not going to do that. And then it generates a 1750. Now, uh, a couple things with the 1750. If you have anything sub-hand receipted out, you don't have it in your shop. So why would you put it on the 1750? Same thing applies here. It's not going on the 1750 until you reconcile that sub-hand receipt. Internal hand receipts it ignores and puts that on here, assuming that you have it. Uh, in our unit, we run our 1750s a little bit different. We need the weights on there, so I have in our running, sun, running spares the weights of each individual item as defined in the script ID database. And it uh, gives you the totals of the weights over in this column here. Under each box, I have the total weight for the box itself. And under everything, it gives you the total weight of everything on the 1750. Now, keep in mind that these are just estimated totals. So it may be a good idea to get out your box after it's been fully packed, throw it on the scale, and just verify the weight. Scratch it out if it's wrong on here, and just hand right in the side how much it actually weighs, and fix the numbers later on. We can go ahead and close this now. And uh, be honest, 1750s suck for me, me and my manifest. So I created my own uh, manifest format. And uh, if you go to print manifest, it filters it down by third platoon and gives you something that you can print out and do an inventory with alongside your boxes if you don't have the computer next to it. Uh, this check mark column is just to check what you've already checked off. You can scratch out, make any adjustments to the on hand, uh, put any remarks, and then when you get back to your computer, you can uh, upload the information manually. Or you can actually use this format right here alongside your uh, your box, your manifest, in, and you can do the same thing in here. Just these check marks here are totally arbitrary check marks just for you to keep track. They aren't linked to anything in the database, so it doesn't matter if they're checked or not logically. Uh, it's just for you to keep track and uh, check off. Uh, when you're done with the inventory and you want to start over or anything, just hit clear inventory and it'll clear all these check marks out. 
And as stated before, you can actually update the on-hand equipment, the remarks, and the location. Uh, if you're confused on what a particular piece of equipment is, like you don't know what a Halligan tool is, all you got to do is click the Descript ID for that particular piece of equipment, and it brings up the picture book entry for it. You can pretty much tell what it is right from there. The next thing we're going to do is create a sub hand receipt. Let's say I have a guy from Bravo Company and I'm currently in Charlie Company and he wants to sign for a Halligan tool and maybe a computer. Uh, we can go ahead and sign it out from the, let's say the Supply NCO or the, I think that's actually the platoon sign right there. We'll go ahead and sign it out to our hatred here and uh, this other information here is just header information for the 2062 you can fill it out or you can leave it blank it's up to you uh, what we do need to fill out is the category that filters on down what we're signing out we're gonna sign out third platoon uh, a third platoon laptop from let's say first squad we'll choose a serial number we'll go ahead and add to the hand receipt and we're also going to sign out a uh, tool Halligan from the same squad. Oops, wrong squad. I'm just going to choose one, add to hand receipt. And down here you got a temporary hand receipt created for you. If you need to remove anything, just hit this remove before you hit create 2062. When we create 2062, that actually updates all the changes and prints out this 2062 for you, complete with LIN, NSN, and if it's available, part number. Uh, over here you'll see the serial number, uh, you'll see what type of equipment it is, um, non-expendable and durable, and then the SIC code associated with that piece of equipment, and you can print this out. Once it's been printed out and signed, you want to scan it back to your computer because when you go to close this, it's going to give you the opportunity to upload it to the, da the database itself. Now this isn't a replacement for a file cabinet, but it is a good backup. So I'm going to navigate to where I saved that scanned document. It should be a PDF. Go open. And then you see that it's actually uploaded to uh, the database. We're also going to update the sign date. And uh, just so I can show you something later on, I'm going to change this to about six months ago or more. Close it out. And uh, if you go to the main menu, you see that our sub hand receipts are set to expire or need to be re signed every six months. Today's December the 7th, 2010 and uh, this is already expired so in order to have the user re-sign it or update the sign date and get it out of there I just go to this where I can uh, reconcile the hand receipt if I want uh, go to open 2062 and it opens it up I can reprint it if I need to and then close it and uh, it'll give us the opportunity to change the sign date to today go to close and it updated the sign date and when we go back to main menu it should no longer be in our little reminder. We'll go ahead and close this and let's say that uh, the user turned in all the equipment again and we need to reconcile the hand receipt. We can just go under basic links reconcile hand receipt and you see that our hand receipt is over here uh, from SAR hatred or to SAR hatred. We'll go ahead and open that up and uh, we can reconcile this one of two ways. We can hit reconcile here and it'll reconcile an individual piece of equipment leaving the hand receipt open and we can reprint it and have the person sign for it again. Uh, or we can reconcile all and close out the hand receipt from here. Once both of these have been reconciled it'll automatically close out the hand receipt either way. So I'm just going to hit this to show you a report real quick. It'll tell you that the sub hand receipt has been closed out here and it will print out this report here so you can tell what where the equipment needs to be returned to what box what squad what uh, whatever uh, you can actually print that out and use it as a guide and go ahead and close that out 
And then if we hit F5, it takes it out of this database here. Now it's still under here, it's still in your database, but you have to be in the uh, master front end in order to see it. Go ahead and close that. The next thing I want to do is uh, manage our expendables. Now this is an option for, say, a supply room where you're constantly going in and out, grabbing materials off the shelf all day, and it just manages your expendables. Let's say we're choosing from third platoon, third squad, and the only expendable we have associated with this uh, squad is the CLP bottle. And we can just real quick change how much we actually have in stock. This keeps you from having to go into the manifest all the time and looking for what you're looking for. And go ahead and close it out. The next thing I want to do is an LPR. Now we used up, we have three CLP bottles and probably a little less. Uh, there's two different ways of ordering stuff. First we'll go by shortages. This will bring up everything in your uh, inventory that you're officially short on. That is, you have less than the authorized quantity. And uh, we'll go ahead and clear current orders here. And we'll press order here. Oh, there's not enough information, so we actually need to open up this. And type in the information associated with reordering that piece of equipment. I'll go ahead and do that all. Okay, now i got all the information. Uh, filled in. Now this probably isn't the way you're going to order CLP, but this is the fastest way I could Google stuff up. So uh, we'll go ahead and press F5 to refresh that, then to order. Update the quantity. If we want to order some more, we can actually choose it from the drop down if we want to do a little less, or it'll free you up to order as many as you want. Update, and it brings it down to the prepared orders. Uh, if I had more stuff under shortages, I can go ahead and order some more stuff, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and create, uh, create LPRs. I'm going to fill out the section, and let's say I'm a Seco Supply. Go to OK. And a uh, requester is just going to be me, Josh, let's say Staff Sergeant and it automatically generates this information for or the LPR for you including total including a uh, point of contacts and your PBO uh, billing officers battalion XO etc etc if you have that information updated in your contact list gonna close there and uh, let me show you the other way we can actually order stuff by item and uh, this brings up the entire list of everything your sign or uh, everything within your Descript ID uh, resuppliers table. And you can actually order stuff. We go ahead and clear orders now. Uh, anything that has the information, you can go ahead and add that stuff to the order and uh, generate your LPRs. and it'll actually separate it out by who you're ordering it from in this case it's cable organizer and gray bar like I said I'm a IT guy so go ahead and clear the current orders there and close this out